So when, the, when I, I decided that I wanted to become a musician, then I came to America, but um, didn't have much money. So, and please don't hear violins coming now, because they shouldn't, but it's true. Um, so then I sold the only guitar I had, and, and I got in a Lloyd's cargo, a big boat. It took me 17 days in that strip and through the Caribbean, you know, all the way 42 Celsius degree, Celsius degree from Rio de Janeiro to a big time blizzard in New York and in this boat for a long time because I heard somebody uh, um, in a record that I really loved and I said, I gotta study it with this person. Well, it took me a long time, man. You know, this person and girls, this person uh, had a waiting list, and I had and I had very little money. So very soon, I was playing for a plate of food. I was doing all sorts of things that uh, destroyed my pride. Thank God, very soon, you know. And, but in doing that, um, I discovered a lot of new music, you know, and music that I didn't even know uh, existed, you know. Uh, by just having left Brazil, by just traveling, um, then I was introduced um, to music of many other cultures. So, um, um, I waited a long time to have a class, almost a year, with this person, and in the end, you know, I, I hurt myself like working in a factory, and I, I knocked the guy's door, you know, and I had a flight back to Brazil because I had just, I'm, I was done, you know. Um, and I knocked on his door, and it was Sunday. My flight was, I think, on Monday. And I said, hey, man, I've been waiting all this time, you know, and, but I have to go, you know, so could I just play for you a couple of things? And the guy says, I don't play guitars on Sundays. I said, but I've been here for a year, you know? So I stopped playing for him, I didn't care, you know? And he, and they, and he said, you know what, come on in. And the one year of real hardship paid off. Just by those maybe like seven hours, I stayed with him. And his name is Mick Goodwick. He's a great jazz guitar player. Um, and he taught me so many things, but he taught me that a lot of things that I was looking for, they were, they lived in books. They live in the history of recorded music already. You know, I just, in Brazil, didn't have access to it. But now I did. I saved some money. I bought all this stuff, you know, and I went back to Brazil. And very happy, very soon I started working over there. Um, from there, I played with, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but with an artist that, were part of my childhood and adolescence, per se, like Ivan Lins, Milton Nascimento, Caetano Veloso, and a lot of other people that I really respected. And one of these recording sessions with one of these artists, actually Ivan, a producer that had produced Simply Red's record, um, uh, asked me, would you like to come and play with this band in England? And from that, I became Simply Red guitar player, and I was with them for 10 years. And my life just kept changing, you know. Pretty much like the day I, I, I set foot on that boat. Pretty much like the day that I've managed to get the attention of the teacher. And, and, um, and it kept going, you know. Until after all these years of playing with them, I came to America, and I met uh, a friend that was co-writing music with, with him, and, and he told me there is a composer that needs some music for a movie. That movie was called As Good As It Gets, and the composer was called Hans Zimmer. It's called Hans Zimmer. Um, and from there, it's where I was introduced to film music. Um, I then realized, as I said in the beginning, that um, these guys were open for anything that would improve the story that they were telling. 
And to me, it was like heaven just opened up in front of me because as a session musician, I would show up into the studio, be the guitar player, you know, and then go back home. Never really kind of thought that much about like the lyrics or the, the production values and all that kind of stuff. So being introduced to film like that, I would say it's kind of getting into a palace, but through the front door. You know, I didn't need to go like many people do. Uh, uh, um, through being somebody's assistant, uh, first paying a fortune to go to school, then being somebody's assistant, and um, and one day hopefully get a break, you know, to write, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and then you start getting exposed. You know, I must say I'm very, 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 very fortunate that what people ask of me was exactly everything that I had learned from that first song, you know, for all the American music and British music from Simply Red. And then all the session artists that I, all the artists that I played with as a session musician, all contributed to the musician that I am. And then the movies said, you know what? We need a little bit of that, you know? And if you have more, you know, we would be very, very happy. So um, I was in heaven, as I said. Um, so I start uh, playing guitar for John Powell, for Harry Gregson Williams, for Hans Zimmer, for other composers. And because these musicians, composers, are so generous and so safe, in their own world. Um, they just said, hey, you know that key over there? Why don't you write it yourself? You know? And then that's how I started um, writing music. You know, just sort of do a, a little guitar cue and then um, and put some strings here and there. And, and that's how I got introduced to it, you know? Um, <laughs>